All right, so John and Pegasus News, if I may, it would be my honor to introduce again my dear friend and business associate that I've been bragging about, the reason that I am here in Dallas in the first place, and that is Mr. Parrish Randall. Parrish? No, 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 this is... This is the woman. This is the lady. This is the true actress. She is the reason yeah. for the season, okay? Mm -hmm. And we in Texas are not only proud, but we are blessed to have her here, all right? And, and I'm blessed to have Texas uh, <laughs> in my court. <laughs> to be really honest, I mean, uh, when I met Brooke about two and a half years ago, I found that we shared in common the same, not only enthusiasm for telling great stories in film, no matter the budget, but uh, we shared in common a belief that you must bring integrity to your work. And to do so, you have to believe in whatever your craft is. We happen to be actors. If you're a singer, you must also bring that same level of integrity to your craft, meaning you work on it, you hone your craft, you be your best. Whether it's a $30 million film or a $300,000 film, the magic of cinema, as I said earlier to someone, uh, is that your work will live on forever. Okay, I don't know if anything else you can do outside of entertainment where what you do today can still entertain people maybe 50 years after you're gone. Yeah. When I was a school man, so. And speaking of entertaining, just so all you horror fans out there in no. Dallas know, Mr. Quick and the Undead, no. and Possum Walk that's coming out, yes. and Flesh Keeper and Slaughterhouse, if I may, I'm going to pimp out his credits here. And I was talking all about Don't Look in the Basement. Uh, so don't Look in the Basement, absolutely. We're very excited. I don't know if you want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Too. You know, one of the things, you know, that, and I, was, I want to kind of touch upon, you know, growing up in a small town in Texas, uh, you don't have a lot to do. We had a small town theater, and I was able to go see these great classic, if you will, exploitation films. At the same time, uh, living at home, my parents' couch, if you will, watching the old late night shows. That's back when we had late night shows. Uh, quite literally, I would see the classics, the film noir classics, with Humphrey Bogart, Jimmy Stewart, John Crawford, Betty Davis. And uh, I realized, wow, that is the magic of cellular. This, this fact that films can be made. 40, 50 years ago, and I'm a kid 40, 50 years later, still being taken away into places and mystical, magical adventures that I could never imagine really going on. But for an hour and a half to two hours, I was being taken on these thrill rides, okay? And I thought, I want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But years passed, obviously, before I actually started pursuing it back. Actually, in 2000, I said finally, you know, this, this desire I have to be the actor uh, and occasionally the filmmaker is something that is not going to go away. So I started out working uh, on some episodic network programs. Uh, I met Chuck Norris, who was great with me. He got me into several episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger. Thanks, Chuck, you know. Uh, from there, LAX and Eye for an Eye, a number of those things. Then my, uh, my agent called and said, uh, we have a role we want you to read for. And I said, okay, we sent the script around. It was uh, the role of the lead bad guy, Blythe Rivington, in The Quick and the Undead. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an apocalyptic zombie kind of western film. So I read, I read for the role and I got it. So within two weeks I'm out in LA, I'm shooting and I'm thinking, wow, this is great. It was my first principal lead role. I had a blast, okay? Had no idea Anchor Bay would pick up the film and uh, they would actually have the premiere at Mann's Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. So I, I, that was a dream realized for me to walk across those footprints and handprints by all those people I grew up admiring so much, and to see a movie that I'm in on screen. Oh, wow, it's awesome. From there, I fell into playing bad guys in all these films, okay? And I reached the point at which, though, I recognized that we needed to bring something new to what is, if you will, be our entertainment. I've always been a horror fan, right? But as I shared with work about two and a half years ago, when we first met, my only problem with many, many B-movies is the fact that women are depicted as being one-dimensional, shallow creatures, usually running half-naked through the woods from a chainsaw-wielding maniac, and I thought, you know, that's not cool. Hmm. I want to see characters like those that Joan Crawford played, or Betty Davis, only I want to see those type of characters in horror. Hmm. I always found thinking women, strong women, much more attractive. I'd much, I'd much rather go to bed with Joan Crawford than Marilyn Monroe. Hey, I can't help it. You know? uh, so, you know, I occasionally produce, so that gives me that ability to go out there and create and control my own project, which enables me. Don't look in the basement. I'm getting 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> don't look in the basement. You know, I saw the original Don't Look in the Basement when I was a kid. It was made in 1973 by S.F. Brownrigg. And it was shot only about 10 minutes away from my parents' home at that time. And I was in my backyard making Super 8 millimeter movies with my neighborhood friends uh, while this guy was making a real movie only minutes away and I realized, wow, it can be done outside of Hollywood. So all these years later, after holding that film near and dear to me and, and you know, telling all the fans about it, trumpeting this old classic, I thought, you know, wow, we're going to remake that, okay? Because the original... Well, Josh loved it, right? Again, Our director, Josh Harris. Uh, Josh and Burton Bailey, Josh Morris is our director, Burton Bailey of Marvel Entertainment, they approached me and they said, you've been wanting to do a remake, right? Of Don't Look at the Basement. I said, you know, absolutely. They said, well, let's do it. I said, you know, I want to, but I said, the only way I will is if indeed I can talk to Tony Brownrigg, the son of S.F. Brownrigg, the director of the original, and if we have his blessing, and not only his blessing, but his participation in the film. He agreed. He read the script and he jumped on board and I was ecstatic. At that point, we began looking at, okay, uh, casting uh, choices. And certainly, immediately, Brooke Lewis, hey, I was looking for that lead heroine, Charlotte, and I wanted an actress who could bring depth, dimension, layers to a character. And I mean, there was no other choice. She was first choice, only choice. I called my gal, Brooke, and said, I got something for you, if you'll do it. And had she said no, I'd have flown to LA and gotten on my knees and begged, okay? Uh, and then I, I thought, okay, as far as uh, the other principal characters, certainly I'm appearing in the film, very proud of the character that I'm playing, the judge, one of my favorite characters from the original, Tommy is playing the sergeant. Then I thought, okay, I'm gonna bring in some of those great cult names that I grew up watching in cult films, okay? Because over the years, acting in horror films now, I've gotten to know so many of these great people and I'm able to call them friends and I have to pinch myself because it's, it's surreal, you know, mm -hmm. to know these people. Right. We're shooting at the original wow. location over in Tawakana, Texas. In July. In July, July 16th. Just so people can come out and come out. Yeah, come out. Yeah, we'll definitely let you come out and watch and yeah. maybe get you in the film, you never know. John will come visit us on set. John will come visit. Will. Absolutely, we'd love to have you. You know, and uh, when you walk into this old dormitory, they maintained it all of these years. It's like walking into the building you saw back in 1973 in that original. It's amazing. So we have so many, so many things going through this film. I feel so blessed and lucky. I think the universe is, is, is telling us all, make the movie. This is one of those films that while the classic is a cult classic, it has a fan following that you wouldn't believe. The fans even say, this is one film that could benefit from a remake. Okay? We're expanding the characters a bit, we're adding a bit to the storyline, we're staying very true to the original atmosphere, if you will, and uh, if you will, the original vision that S.F. Brownrigg had, which is giving it more, I guess, you meet, meet. Modernized. Modernized, and the characters are a little bit more yeah, well-developed, yeah. because I always felt each character had a backstory that wasn't brought to the fore in the original, because of budgetary limitations and time constraints, but now we're going to take it a bit further, and hopefully S.F. Brownrigg you know, wherever he is, would look down and be proud. Sure. I think we'll all yeah. be proud. So, thank you so much, So I tend to go on. <laughs> That's fine. We're passionate you? people. We're very it's passionate about yeah, what we do. We work very hard and... <laughs> we love to see that. That's great. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And, uh, you know, for all the folks that are going to be looking at this before the weekend's over, you're both going to be out at Frightmare, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Shout out to everybody. Texas Frightmare Weekend will be okay. there. Yep, I'm saying. Yeah, Lloyd Cryer, yep. Sue, God bless them. They brought them Lloyd, to Noel, Texas. Everybody. The convention that yeah. Texas has needed for years. Yeah. And so you guys can find us, I don't know when this is airing, but a horror f car file horror table, table uh, PRP uh, Productions, yeah. and Arcade yeah. Redemption table, Anthony Brown, right? We should all be congregating together and promoting. walking distance. Of the other, we're near the Christine car, by the way. Christine, yes, Another one of the original yeah. Christine you know, uh, cars used in the film, and John Carpenter is there. And uh, last night, uh, we held the premiere of 2001 Maniacs Field of Screams, directed by Tim Sullivan. Great guy, by the way. And uh, yeah, I, gonna be, I shout it out to him. He's working with us, and I'm going to be working with Tim. He told me, yeah, he's, he's got a part for me in his next film. I'm so excited. That's so, great. things are great, you know. Uh, here in Texas, we have. Finally, we have united as filmmakers, as actors, and we've gotten the attentions of, if you will, people well outside of Texas. We're blessed. Like we're me, fortunate. Hollywood, I love you, but I'm getting a cowgirl hat this summer. We're going to yeah. put her in a cowgirl hat. <laughs> and high heel, high heel cowboy boots.
Yeah, there you go.